Masking can open all kinds of possibilities and give your footage a unique look. A mask is simply something that obscures or reveals something, depending on whether you have it inverted or not. Now, as you can see here, I have this planet file. And you, if you want to follow along, look in your work files folder and open up planet.png and simply drag it right here so that we have the comp ready to roll. So if you look up here, we have this rectangle tool. And if you click and hold it down, you see that we have other shapes in here. These will all produce something called a mask. And it becomes more apparent once we actually put one on something. So go ahead and grab the star tool with me. And starting from the center, click and then drag your mouse out to the right or left. As you see here, the left goes the other way and the right goes to expand it. And holding it down, you can even rotate the mask if you want. And when you let go of the mouse, you see that everything outside of this boundary has been obscured by this shape. And that's the beauty of a mask. Now, if we had something in the layer behind this planet, we'd actually be able to see that through this mask. So what I'm going to do now is show you that, let me go ahead and move this up. We can twirl the properties open for the mask itself. As you can see, this is mask one. And we can change the mode of the mask as well. Currently, it's on add. We can put it on subtract. And you notice what happens. It subtracts the inside of the mask and reveals the outside. And add, of course, does the opposite. It adds whatever you have inside the mask and keeps it there. We also have the ability to intersect things and do all kinds of other things based on the layers you have. I'll put it back on add and also show you that we can click here to invert that mask, which is the same thing, of course, as using the subtract. So we invert the selection. We also have a mask path. So if you click the word shape, we can change the shape to an ellipse, for example, and it changes the shape. And the cool thing about this is we can actually animate that because in After Effects, animation is king. So check this out. Let's go ahead and click on the mask path stopwatch one time. And let's move over just a tad in our timeline. Click once again on the word shape and change it to rectangle and scrub. How cool is that? Very, very cool. We can even go further in the timeline, go back to shape again, and change it back to an ellipse. We also have the ability to affect what's known as the mask expansion, or what is covered inside of the mask. And you can go ahead and use this guy here to change how much or how little the mask is actually covering. And yes, we can actually animate that as well. So I'll go ahead and click on a stopwatch here. I'll move over to Ted, and I'll just drop that, or rather raise it up. And we can animate that, and it looks pretty cool. Now, later on in this same section, I talk about the feather, so definitely check that out. Feathering simply allows us to blur the edges and make it really cool, to get a nice vintage vignette feel. We can also, of course, animate and change the opacity of the mask as well. So as you can see, masking is pretty cool. Now I want to show you one more cool trick. Check this out. I'm actually going to move my time indicator over a little bit and grab one of these handles with this tool here, the selection tool. So I move it like this, and it will actually animate over time. I can grab this and do the same thing. So you can really create some cool things like blobs or water or whatever you can really think of with this effect. And once again, that is how we use and create a mask inside of After Effects.